You had a whole tummy tuck. Did you keep Jamal? Of course not. Giselle got with the, uh, 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 um. Now, I am happy that Wendy said, no, I ain't going after Ashley. Ashley's the messenger. Gabrice and the Gabrissi's the one that's spreading the rumors. So now, Rob Dixon is trying to get out of her part. Her part that she played in it. And Wendy pulled up that text message blowing up so we can clearly see you're a lying heifer in a sack dress. Did you really spend money? Yes, she actually has it. I mean, she's mortgaged up to the hilt, but she ain't got no tax debt. You can't spend a little of your cap money to prove your innocence? Rob, Wendy will stop cutting you off when you cut out the lies. Yes, Gabrissi, why didn't you pull Wendy aside since you wanted to pull aside Rob, Candace, Ashley, and damn near Monique about Wendy's business when you could have gone straight to the source? Is it because you're a hateful harpy, or is it because you're a peasant without a plot line? Rob Dixon, you just slow. The same rumor Wendy was talking about is the same rumor you were talking about. There were never two rumors. Mia gonna say, well, Wendy, if it's not true, why do you care? I wouldn't want nobody lying about my husband, and I wouldn't want to give no hussies any reason to think they've got hope. You don't give a hussy no hope. Now, Wendy, I do believe that Gabrissi brought it up on purpose, even though that blog has talked about her. Child, Wendy pulled the phone record. She said, Gabrissi, we talked for 60 seconds. We ain't settled shit. We coming back from commercial break with Rob Dixon. Fast forward and best fiends. Your depression is depressing. Just flashing back through the season of your boy-built looks. So Rob says that she's not making enough money to be messing with Macy's. She's got to kill it with e-commerce. I think it's just because you're lazy. But good for you and your new home. How did you beat Gabrice and Gabrissi on getting your house together? Gabrice and Gabrissi is still trying to assemble it like a pack of Lincoln Logs, and you're already moved in. Rob said, I'll get married eventually, le, 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 allegedly. The man loves you, allegedly. You ain't a fool, allegedly. But he ain't here, allegedly. Now that is clear. You ain't getting married. You ain't gonna get married. You ain't gonna get married. A little remix. You know, Giselle, you're right. Michael does want to marry Juan, but nobody wants to marry you. Rob, I don't know if you want to have another baby for him because this geriatric pregnancy would, would not be a good plot line. You just aren't interesting en enough to make it pop. So the husbands in Gabrice's luggage come out to join the ladies. And of course, Juan and Michael were together. Basketball practice, my butt. They had somebody's strip club with somebody's swingers. But now Candace's overbearing mother calls. Eveline herself. Oh my goodness, Ashley gonna say your lech, your golem hasn't been overly sexual, but he's trying to put his face in Juan's crotch? Heffa please. So Chris says he's basically Candace's assistant. A friendly flunky. Well, at least Candace is self-aware enough to admit she's just like that mama. And you're gonna end up divorced just like your mama because you're running Chris off. Candace, you just mad that Mia can play your game a bit better than you. She'll go over the line just like you. She'll get petty just like you and give a better read than you. Because them feats, mm-mm. You deserved every bit of cuts out for making us pay attention to those talents. And you want to talk about Mia's feet when you walk around with your feet looking like foghorn leghorn. Chicken little feet, mm-mm. Wendy really upset about that. What kind of married woman wants to make eye contact with my husband? Eddie don't care if he made contact with you. Wendy, we get it. Don't talk about Eddie. You could have followed that up with he wouldn't want to look at you. Giselle is not giving Eddie an apology for messing with his merge. Well, stubborn and stupid are always best friends. So we get to talk about Kern and her work for Suri. They finally got up some Wi-Fi. And then Ray talks about being her champion. And Chris says, oh, so it's good for Ray to be a champion. But when I do it, I'm a mooch. Well, Ray never moved into her house. Ray might not have gotten her attention, but Ray never moved into her house, and Ray paid the bills for her to be a housewife. 
Y'all just starting out and the mama seems to be putting most of the financial burden. So that's why we look at you through a bum of your lens. So they done brought out half of a nodge and she's giving them a little disclaimer. So Nikki getting on Ashley for wanting to spend time with her baby and said, oh, you were just Giselle's flunky so you could stay at home and nurse. And she might be right. But I think Ashley also doesn't have that much of a plot line because she's always been a bone carrier. Well, that was the shot. Well, since that didn't give us shit, let's get to Queens. So we open with Little Muffin's triumphant return. So she's got to create a new image for herself since she's not all drugged out no more. So Little Muffin has decided she's just going to go with her old image and keep on stage and off stage separate. And I believe that. I know I'm not looking at the screen. It's because I'm playing Best Fiends. So since their single is doing so well, the manager got them a gig at the AMAs, but they're nervous because they're like, the last time we performed, we stunk up the joint. And y'all did. Y'all did. Y'all stunk it up like the encore. Sad thing is I know Misha and Irish from 702 is crying every time they watch this show thinking this should have been us. And it should have. Meanwhile, with the hussy, Brie meets her pregnant mistress. Well, her husband's pregnant mistress. You know this heifer keeping that baby. Why are you even playing with that plot line? Come on now. Of course, Valeria got to get a butt shot before the show, but her doctor hit a nerve so she can't walk, much less gyrate a shimmy. And now this heifer got a stalker. Now this girl trying to go grocery shopping for herself. Honey, you didn't grow up Paris Hilton. Now Kathy Hilton could pull this I don't know what four pounds of ham is. Honey, you been new. Now she in the checkout line hoping to get recognized. But she hears some fans say some unflattering things and shoves her cart and takes off. Child, they ain't always nice. Meanwhile, with Brandy's daughter and her new pappy, she's like, you know what? I'm going to just call you Eric for right now. Let's hold up on the dad, dad, dad shit. Lord, the pappy having lunch and he get his chain snatched just like an old fogey. I mean, you know, there's some old heads I wouldn't try it with. Buster, I would not try it with. But uh, you, yeah, <laughs> child, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. He said, no cops, we got to do this old fashioned and bust some heads. The daughter said, that sounds stupid. And she's right. Back at rehearsal, they going to take a little break because Jill still ain't showing up. She's the new gay star. Valeria happy she got a stalker. And Brandy's like, well, I can't tell the pappy not to be in my daughter's life because truth is I just stepped in two seconds ago myself. Myself. Girls, so the hussy going to ask Eve, Will you drive me to my abobo? Because I just can't have this baby. And Eve's like, for real? You can't get a Uber? Oh, dear. So we find out that Jill's new girlfriend is getting her a surprise solo performance at the pre-party for the AMAs. However, her husband's just frozen her accounts. I knew he'd come back to bite her in the butt. The husband is the fool with the gun at the end of the season. He gonna unfreeze the accounts and let her go now, but mm, mm he coming back. That puss was too good. Now Lil Muffin meeting with her sissies and they're like, girl, two months in hip hop is two years. You're getting stale, hon. It's time to freshen it up. So to get herself back in the headline, she gives herself a diamond unicorn horn. What old school, new school thug hitting on Eve trying to fly her out to get belly? Jill, the thrill, and the nasty butches. Asses need to be whooped. Boom, 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 boom. Asses need to be whooped. So Eve drops by that tenderonies after the show to get some dirt. So the daughter pull the daddy aside and show him, look, uh, these fools on TikTok stole your chain. Just call the popo. I'm not looking for you to be a hero. I just want you to be a dad. I need an example of responsibility. Ah, uh, he said, well, I was planning on giving that chain to you because when I found out your mama was pregnant, I knew we were over, so it was a band-aid. But now we get into rehearsal and the cherry strutting and the girls are pissed about the nasty butchers. And you were supposed to be moving in to help Eve with her kids. You're out here living it up childless and free. 
child, now that she's living lesbian and free, she said, I don't need any of you. I don't need this group. I am the lesbian star. Child, pff, you see how that worked for Janet Mock. It'll, it'll, it'll give you a good 10 minutes in the sun and then push, push, push you on. Lil Nasal Expert to get his last hits in. So Valeria give Lil Muffin some advice on keeping it true to herself. So as this heifer's trying to get ready for her, sh her photo shoot, she rips this thing out her head. Oh my God. I can't even with the stupidity. Oh God, now Valeria's mama showing up. That's her stalker. Lord, so Alexis did disappeared with the baby, just moved out and vanished. Meanwhile, Jill's ex-husband comes over and lights the annulment agreement on fire. They did not need to end the episode with that Jennifer Hudson caterwaul. Help her, help her, help her. God. This guy was like, Jesus, turn it down. All right, well, that was the shit.